But I was just sitting here looking at me like, what the hell are you doing? What's up, YouTube family? Artist Jones here. I wanted to try a little something different with my videos. Um, I have been pretty inspired lately uh, by the amount of content going on. So, I just wanted to talk about, and it, excuse my background. I'm new to this. I'm trying something different now. I actually put this desk together myself. This desk was actually 15 years old and I recovered it and repurposed it because um, I couldn't let it go. Is that like an old thing now? Because I'm like older? I wanted to start giving a, a, an idea as to why I painted pieces or what was my thinking or it's more like a diary for me. Um, I've always thought about writing these things down, but I mean, like who writes anymore? I have been laughed at when I tell people to write stuff down because they're like who writes things down anymore did you know this did you know that that's like not a thing anymore I didn't I wanted to just basically um create this diary uh, uh of my life and where I'm at at the time with things um when I'm painting the first piece I want to talk about is my painting beyond a space cadet story so I finished this painting in what, 2020, early 2020, around uh, January, February, January, February. I had a show that I was going to be in. During that show, uh, it, I was actually going through a separation. I was going through a separation uh, from a 12 year marriage and um, I was, you know, dealing with a lot of the emotions that came with that. Things that I had never felt before. Uh, you know, creatives, we are passionate, we are, we, we are emotional, but, um, for some reason, my emotion, I can only seem to, uh, speak through my art. I can't seem to find my words too well when it comes to emotion. So with the Beyond piece, um, this is actually my second attempt at, um, using, collage pieces, cutouts for magazines and things. Uh, I did not paint all of these background elements. They actually came out of scientific magazines. I found these really cool magazine pieces um, that I wanted to use in an upcoming collage. And I collected as many as I possibly could. Um, there were even more elements that were supposed to go into this piece. I think that if it was bigger, I would have been able to fit more in there, but I didn't want it to be too crowded. Uh, because that's not how I felt at the time. So this piece is actually, this piece is actually a self-portrait of me. Like I said, I was going through um, a separation from a very long-term uh, relationship, very long-term marriage. Um, I just felt like uh, coming apart. You know what I mean? Um, I was coming apart. I had had my daughter about two years prior to that, I'm a more masculine individual. So um, when it came to having children, um, it was always like a scary thing for me. And it was always something that I wanted my partner to do for me. However, I am grateful that I was able to uh, accomplish um, giving birth in my lifetime because my daughter, she's everything. Lessons that she has taught me are everything. I had gone through a very um, rough spell of uh, postpartum and it wasn't anything that I knew that I was in. Mothers, sometimes you're not going to notice, you know, when you are uh, actually in it, when you're going through postpartum, you need those around you to actually notice what's happening um, and what's going on with you. Um, <clears throat> you know, for me, I felt fine. And now that I look back on um, little things, uh, I, I absolutely see uh, what was happening. I had just started to kind of round myself back into finding myself again um, when we had actually separated. I spent a lot of time with my daughter. 
one of the things about postpartum is you don't necessarily bond um, very well with your child. And that's not to say that I just, you know, but um, I absolutely, I was not as close as I wanted to be. Um, I couldn't, I was scared of her. I was like, terrified. Um, not only was I terrified, but I was, It was very emotional for me, I'm sorry. I was lost. Uh, a big identity, a big part of me, of who I was, was gone. I didn't know who this person, this new person was. Um, I had no idea. And from always being more masculine to turning into more feminine, that was something that I didn't really understand, that I wasn't really quite aware of um, when I was thinking, when we were planning. Um, now, at that point, I just shut down. I shut down all communication about myself or about what I was going through. You don't know. You don't know you're going through it, and you really need those around you that love you, that, that know you every day to actually see what's going on and, and see what's happening. Um, Okay, so basically, um, I was just starting to come out. Like I said, I was just starting to come out of of um, postpartum. Um, you know, it was just me and my daughter, so we bonded. We did everything. I started the Beyond Peace. I'm very drawn to the stars. I'm very drawn to the planets of what's out there. When I was younger. Um, I was very, very ditzy. I mean, not ditzy, but spacey. Yes, very spacey. My mind was always somewhere. I was always imagining or creating or something in my mind. When people spoke, <clears throat> it's like the words would just kind of like funnel in. I'd get like bits and pieces. I think that still happens to this day. Words would just funnel in. And just funnel in, funnel in, funnel in. <clears throat> and I pick certain ones. And in the meantime, my mind is still processing <clears throat> other things. You know, creating or questioning or anything. So trickling of words. Other things going on over here. So I was always Spacey Tracy. What are some stereotypes of artists? And I remember Spacey was definitely one of them. And I was like, oh my God. I decided to do the astronaut as a self-portrait um, with these collage pieces in the background. I knew I wanted it to be uh, surreal because that's exactly how I was feeling at the time. It was just a very surreal experience coming out of the postpartum to jump into what was now a separation. Uh, was it was shattering um, it broke me it broke me into a lot of pieces um, at that point art was the only thing that saved me I was able to sorry I'm getting choked up <laughs> I needed it. I needed something to save me. Friends and family weren't going to do that. Uh, as much as I love them, as much as, you know, <laughs> I needed something else in those in-between moments when I didn't have friends or family. And that was definitely art for me. Back to the piece. So this astronaut here is supposed to represent me. Um, he's actually done in grayscale. Now, when I paint, Things like this, if I was to paint this astronaut normally and I wanted him to be in color, I would have thrown some blues or some purples in there to mix this gray so that it wasn't exactly grayscale rather than using black and white. If you are beginning and you know, you're know you just starting to get into or you've been sketching for a long time or this or that, study your color theory. Study your color theory. Study your color theory. Please study your color theory. Color theory tells you everything you need to know. Your pieces will be completely different if you understand color theory. I work in Adobe a lot and um, there's an eyedropper tool. With that eyedropper tool, you can actually go and pick out the pieces and, uh, of what you're looking at and find out what colors they are. If you loaded a photo in there, 
and you wanted to know what color this part was, you could eye drop that and you have your color swatch right there. It was very important to me. So like I said, with a traditional, traditionally, if I was to paint this in this astronaut in color, he would definitely not be painted in using white and black. He would be painted using uh, white and blue and black or white and purple and black or white, purple, blue and black or white and pink and black. You know what I mean? So it would be something to kind of like trick your eye to think that it's black, but you're, you're bringing out that color a lot more um, because it's not quite black. Um, it's, it's how you would probably see it more in, in the real world. Uh, shadows, shadows are not just black. Um, when you paint your shadows, make sure you're not painting, make sure you're not using, you know, black. Uh, I'm going to challenge you. I'm going to challenge you to use a different color when you paint your, when you paint your shadows. If your shadow is sitting on something that's red, don't do a black shadow. It, what's, what's actually happening is when you, when you sit that shadow on top of that red, it's going to create a deeper red. It's, it's just, it's just bringing the intensity of the light down on that red. Um, so it's creating a deeper red. So do not use blacks. <laughs> use blacks, incorporate the black, but just use, use an actual color in there of what that shadow is laying on. Um, it's going to really change your pieces. So I kept the visor color because that's how I felt. I felt like I could see this whole world around me um, in color and motion everything about it um, was, I could see everything. It was just kind of like stepping out of your body at the time. But with this, with this, this was me muted. Um, I was dulled out. I was black and white. Everything else was in color. But that's just, that's exactly how it felt. It felt like the world was still moving, was still going around. And here I was, you know, becoming this. And here I was just fading. I took these pieces uh, in the background. I put them back there um, out of this. Now, do not put this in a child's room. Maybe teenager, not child, okay? Because there are some um, images in here that aren't uh, necessarily for children. I knew that um, I wanted this surreal scene behind the astronaut, nothing that really like, you know, made sense. My world didn't make sense. I wasn't at home. I wasn't in my day to day. I wasn't with my family. I wasn't doing my daily routine. It was, it was different. It was, everything was different. It was just a really surreal experience. So I put things together that didn't necessarily, that you wouldn't necessarily find in space. I blended them out to make them look like they were part of the same scene. And then I took a toothbrush, put some little speckles of, uh, of paint on there to mimic the stars. This orange, um, again, I played on into the, the surreal experience. I love, I needed a color to actually outline him in. I was wondering if I should outline him. And then I thought, if that color, if I'm outlining him in that color, It'd just be really cool if it was playing into the surreal experience. So I wanted it to melt somehow. I didn't, I, it's no problem for me to actually destroy things that I paint to, to, you know, try to achieve a certain look that I want. You can always paint over it. Always remember that. You can always paint over it. You just have to do it again. I actually did the outline and then I poured it, I flipped them upside down. And then I poured, I actually dripped little pieces of the paint down. Um, and what I noticed was it started to pool down here. And normally I would have wiped it off, you know, redid this part so that it didn't pool or something like that. But to me at the time, it was perfect. Um, because it adds to this experience that not only this is like an illusion. You know what I mean? You feel all this space here, but you're boxed in. Your your world is very small. It's still very small. So I really like that. I kept that, you know, you get this idea that it ends. Um, 
it ends somewhere. Um, and he's close to that. You know what I mean? That's present. That's And that's not to say that I was thinking, you know, bad thoughts like that or anything like that. It was, you know, the world is not that big. Our worlds are not that big. Uh, it could fit in a box. I mean, it's just kind of up to you to, you know, not fit in that box, not fit your world in that box. The next part I did was I didn't finish the astronaut because I wanted him to be disintegrating. Um, that's how I felt. I felt like I was coming apart. Um, so in making him disintegrate, I had to learn how to do this, this gray here and this black and things like that and actually take more of those, uh, that that paint that toothbrush and and splatter some more of that orange to make it seem like you know that's coming apart too it was just a very um interesting <sighs> it's just a very interesting time in my life this piece means a lot to me you know it seems to be the biggest uh one of the biggest sellers on my site everybody loves this one <laughs> But uh, the story behind it, you know what I mean? It, 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 the way that people love it, the way that people love it, it always makes me wonder <clears throat> if something in them is attracted to it. You know, you don't just want to kind of ask people, hey, like, why don't you like this? You think it's cool? Or um, are you going through some shit? I know where I came from when I created it. That doesn't necessarily translate uh, to people when they're viewing the art. I know that everybody sees something differently. When, when people actually view your art, if they don't read it, <clears throat> you should learn what they think it's about first. It's very, very, very interesting um, to hear the different interpretations of what people think that your art is about if it's not very, very clear. I'm going to say, if you feel that you are going through uh, postpartum, if you feel it, Talk to the people that are closest to you about it. There are going to be people who don't believe you, who are going to say, oh, you're fine this, oh, you're fine that. You have to find that person who will believe you. I don't care if it's your doctor. I don't care if it's um, your neighbor's cousin at the time that you're talking to. You have to find somebody who's going to believe you, somebody who can relate to you and talk to you about that. Even if there's other women that went through it, talk to them about it. I had an experience uh, where I actually spoke with somebody who whose child was the same age, um, who, t you know, we talked and we found out that we were in the same boat around the same time <laughs> and got better around the same time. It took a good two, two and a half years to actually bounce back and be myself again and realize and step into this new person of who I am. That old person of who I was, is not there anymore. I'm not going to be that person anymore. And this has changed me. Women are changed by childbirth. They are changed by their children. The other partner didn't go through that process. So there's things that they don't understand that are happening. Talk to somebody, talk to anybody. If you have gone through a separation, uh, a divorce, anything like that, uh, my heart is with you. Uh, that is truly a, um, a life changing, a soul changing experience. I, I implore you to find something, anything to occupy your time, to preoccupy your time. I know this is COVID, but hell, learn a new language, you know, um, do some stuff. Just do some stuff. Uh, keep your mind active. Keep your mind busy. If you have gotten through to the end of this video, thank, thank, thank you. Thank you, guys. Be kind to each other. Be kind. Comment. Follow. Subscribe. Do all that stuff because I'm trying to build this. Thank you.